everybody. Welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout with Alan Malventano, and we have this thing here mm -hmm. in between us. Uh, this is one of our traditionally one of our CPU test beds. Uh, it's got a Asus X99 Deluxe yep. motherboard on there, a Core i7 5960X processor. Mm -hmm. It's got this nice Corsair water cooler in there. Uh, but you changed what our graphics card and PCI Express configuration was a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to put in a smaller graphics card to make room for five SSD 750s. So we repl I, what I usually have in this test bed is a Radeon R9 290X or something like that. We yep. instead have a very old <laughs> Galaxy GeForce G10, G210 yep. video card, single slot. It's got a VGA port on it. It's a classic. Yeah. Uh, and it, I, I'm a little worried you don't have enough space there for it to, for its fan to get an intake, but that's not that's not the concern. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. So there are five Intel SSD 750 products yep. in here. All SSD's 400 gig 400 variants. gig models, yeah. Yeah, essentially we got uh, we had a handful of these in for contests that were running, uh, the one of the one of which is still actively running. And before we sent the prizes out, we thought, well, how often are you going to have Five, five of something. Five yeah. PCI Express SSDs, mm -hmm. NVMe PCI Express SSDs, kind of just sitting there. Yeah, and you know I want to make sure they all worked. You know, just for <laughs> right. contest winners. Right. We didn't. We wanted to prevent uh, prevent any DOA mm -hmm. uh, concerns. So you plugged all five of these into this motherboard. Does the motherboard have enough PCI Express for all that? It does, kind of. Okay. Like it has enough PCI Express lanes. I mean, that, that CPU has 40 PCI Express 40 lanes. 40 lanes, right. Uh, the problem, however, as we found out, was that the way they're distributed among the, the slots is not set up, really, for SSDs that only have four lanes each. This is a by 4 PCIe 3 SSD. Correct. Right, so in theory, you'd only need 20 lanes plus whatever you want for the graphics card to actually work. Yep. Yep. But because this motherboard is designed for GPUs, right. not SSDs, right. it has plenty of PCI Express, but they're kind of divide it up into give you at least 16 or maybe 8 lanes per slot. Yeah, and that's what we're seeing is like the, the slots are, uh, f the four bottom slots, the four closest to the camera here. These here, yeah. Um, those four are set up, uh, I think what ends up happening is we get by 8 on each right. one. Um, it does, there's no really way for it to drop it down to by 4, except for the very last slot, but you only have to do that if you also intend to use like an M.2. SSD. So in theory, you get by eight for the PCI, the top one for the graphics card, yep. and then you get eight, 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 eight. What about the second one? You don't get by eight. You don't get CPU lanes. Actually, you get lanes from uh, the South Bridge via DMI. Oh, okay. So yeah. I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? Again, because this is an enthusiast class motherboard. Right. Most people are going to have two slot graphics cards, so this slot is almost never going to be used. Yeah, that's that's the one that I would say would be least likely to be used. Yeah. So you know, Asus probably said, "All right, you know, well, we'll just we'll give them an extra slot in case they need it for something." Right. But because of the way that that links, first of all, you have the DMI bridge, which adds latency. Right. Because uh, you're not connecting direct to the CPU, and then the DMI output to that slot is only PCI Express. Uh, it's by four. It's four lanes, but it's only two point Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's a yeah. little bit slower and it's a little more latent. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, we booted into Windows, all these SSDs showed up. Yeah. But you can't raid not them in the traditional way. Like you can't go into the BIOS, say I want to use all five of these drives in a raid zero. Correct. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You couldn't boot yeah. off of a, a multi-SSD configuration of you could 750s. Not. You could not. Okay. Um, and there's no way to tie them. Like if you use the Intel style RAID, like the motherboard controller RAID, right? Uh, that's still technically a software RAID, but it's very efficient because it's like kind of BIOS slash hardware augmented. Okay. Right. Um, and that works great for SSDs, but there is no equivalent for PCI Express devices, especially NVMe PCI Express devices. So the only thing kind of left with is Windows. Okay. Or just whatever your operating system is to tie them together. Just software, software RAID. RAID that way. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, nowhere near as optimized for, um, you know, fire breathing SSDs <laughs> like these. It just. But did it work? Like, did you. Were you oh, able it to worked. Yeah. In, for, for a Windows software RAID, what's that called? It's just RAID. Oh, it's really? Like, you do a okay. disk management and you just, you know. Okay. Uh, there is another version called Storage Spaces. That's like the newer, right. you know, Windows okay. 8.8 uh, 8 thing. Um, so, the actually, the, the old school, the Windows old, you know, software RAID disk management style um, was actually faster than storage spaces. Uh, just because storage spaces kind of, 
I, I configured the array and set it up for striping. Everything was like good, but uh, when you run a simple test like Addo, it only has a relatively small, you know, file that it puts on the on the drive for test right. file, right? Sure. And I looked over, and the access lights for only two of the SSDs were lighting up because mm. the file was only so big, and it was only overlapping, you know, what storage space gotcha. is allocated to a couple of them, right? So obviously, you're not going to get striped, you know, really good performance of all the drives simultaneously in that sure. in that way. Uh, the Windows software RAID, a little bit better, uh, but still Addo, um, just like a quick Addo bench test, uh, capped out a little bit over 4 gig per second. Okay. No, I mean, that seems quick. Don't it is, but w it's one of these is like 2 gigs. Yeah, one of them can do like 2.2. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're only getting roughly... So move past that. that. That's garbage. That's yeah. Just okay. Make well, sure so it let's works. Forget about that. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, so it will work if you wanted just one volume. Yes, you'll get more speed. I would. I would. I would say I would never recommend just going more than a couple of these. If you intend yeah. to just have a Windows-based RAID, one drive letter, tie them together, sort of thing, right? Yeah. Um, but I figured, well, what the heck? We have them all together like this. Um, and if you were to have some other software, say some database software, or virtualization software, or something where you can just kind of like point it to, you know, chunks of storage, mm -hmm. where that software worries about allocating the storage and you know partitioning it how it, it yeah. wants to and yeah. things like that, right? Um, you know, I figured, well, hypothetically, what would that look like if you had software optimized for multiple very fast SSDs, right? And we can simulate that with Iometer uh, because you can have multiple workers and point those sets of workers at different pieces of storage. Right. right? Um, and we tried that, and then we uh, pretty quickly figured out that it doesn't take, uh, you know, this is an eight core CPU in here. Yep, it's a 5960X, um, which is an eight core 16 thread processor. Yep, yeah. and I was able to completely saturate it. Yeah. With IOs. So wh what's that get us up to in terms of performance? Uh, so I don't have a number in here for the CPU not overclocked. Because we pretty quickly realized, oh wait, CPU yeah. is the bottleneck. When when I mean we had so much storage performance that the CPU was the bottleneck. Yeah, we, yeah I think its base clock is what three point two, three point. I think it's six. I think boost is like three point six. And okay, 3. I think three point was. But we had we overclocked to four point five, four point five yeah. gigahertz uh, on all eight cores. Yep. Okay. Yep. And w so what's that get us? So we moved. We Addo showed us about four gigs per second. But what could you get out of it with Iometer? So in that configuration, when we were writing to all the SSDs in order to just precondition them, like to give you real world results, right? yeah. uh, the write speed uh, to four of them was just over five gig per second. OK. That's a write the speed. write speed. Yeah. OK. Uh, read speed to four, from four of them, just we're talking sequential writes or sequential reads, uh, 9.5 gig per second. 9.5 gigs per second. That's, OK. That's a bigger number. Yeah. Uh, and then just for kicks, even though we knew there was a DMI limitation and all those other limitations for that fifth for SSD, fifth which I wasn't really touching that much, right? Uh, if I added that in on the sequential reads with I was a new able worker to, hit, to go to it, uh, yes, right? Um, I was able to do uh, one point oh three, or sorry, ten point three. Wow, I was reading that wrong. Ten point three gig per second. So we're able to get over ten gigabytes per second of storage performance. Yes through those SSDs. And yeah. that's with the fifth one not only adding like the, about the a fifth gig. One, the fifth one was like, it was like 830 meg per second okay. or so, which yeah. I, I did the math, kind of backwards calculated it, and it was saturating four lanes of PCI 2.0 when you consider the overhead that you have. Now when you do that s just sequential read, trying to get the maximum performance out of it, were we saturating the CPU then? No, 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 no. no. Okay. No, CPU was just breathing easy. It might have been like okay. 15 or 20%. You know, I did so that's our, our peak is like 10 gigs per second. Mm -hmm. Or so, just over That's that. That's on sequentials. Yep. Right. And now what about when you start getting into random. the random stuff where you go th think about think about IOs per second and all that? So uh, with data on all of the SSDs, in other words, we're not kind of cheating and just trying to read from data that's not been written before. Mm -hmm. uh, with everything pre-allocated and everything, and ra uh, random reads, four of them. I actually had to back off of the fifth one because the fifth one slows things down mm. in that case, right? Because it's a slower link, has higher latency, and I would have to give up workers that were, like I was doing four workers per SSD on the other four. Right. So it's a nice even number, right? Where, and like I would have had to take workers off of those drives that were going faster and put them on a slower drive mm. to do all five. So that was kind of a wash to try that. Okay. Uh, but with the four you know, fast linked um, drives in place, 
at 1.77 million IOPS. Okay. That's a high number. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, it actually works out pretty what? close to the individual drive specs, just times four. Hmm. Okay, so it scales well. Yeah, so they're, they're scaling, uh, but and the CPU was pegged at that point. Ha um, have we seen higher IOPS than that, like when we go to shows and demos and stuff like that? We, you saw, say? we saw an Intel demo at IDF with a ra that rack full of 24 SSD uh, like P3700s, which is just the enterprise version of, right. of those, right? It was, it was 24 of them. It was like eight per... Sure. Like a uh, you know controller or whatnot right, right, right. or PCI Express like link, um, and that was I think they were boasting that it was over two million IOPS. I think that was their number. Right. I might have to go back and check, but I think two million was like the the number that they okay. were you know they were okay. bragging about there, right? Right. So we're almost there with just four of these, right? So that's not too shabby, right? Um, and then I was trying to do some more testing just to figure out like you know where was the true bottleneck there. Like, was it the SSDs? Because Intel SSDs tend to go a little bit past their spec. Yeah, um, they seem to be a little bit more... Yeah, um, and since I was saturating all of the CPU cores at the same time, I mean, what are like, the mouse was kind of, like, <laughs> hiccuping as it was going across the screen, and, you know, iometer wasn't really refreshing very often, and, yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, so what I did was I ended up just reformatting all four of those SSDs, and then re-deleting those partitions again and, and foraying them, trims them, basically clears out all the allocation. Gets it back to its fastest possible state mm -hmm. immediately. Right. Right. Uh, and then, now realize this is not even a realistic test, but to do random reads on empty SSDs, right? You're kind of... You don't do that for very long. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you don't do that. It, it doesn't yeah, exist in the real a, world. You, right. you would only read from something that you had written previously, right? <laughs> Normally. Makes sense. Um, but for, for the purposes of just seeing, okay, you know, what if the SSDs could go just a little bit faster, and how much further into the CPU bottleneck can we push okay. the system, right? And in that case, we got 2.03 million IOPS. 2.03 million IOPS per second. Was that on the 4 drive or the 5 drive? That was the 4. That was the 4 drive, freshly formatted. And yep, and everything fresh. Well, you hit 1.7 something with used data. 1.77 like with, with actual, like it was reading actual data. And at that data rate, uh, it was 7.2 gigabytes per second worth of random 4K reads. That's like, that's, yeah. that's pretty amazing that it's able yeah. to do that. It's almost as if it was a sequential figure, right? So what do, you think, what do you think would happen if we took this configuration and moved it to like a dual processor system? Like, like if we had, like our streaming machine here that has yeah. two 10 core processors, 20 threads each. You would, you would just more quickly hit the SSD bottleneck. Right. Provided you had enough lanes and like right, slots right. All to that plug everything same. in, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it, it would just uh, kind of, that CPU breathes easy when you throw all sorts of stuff at it in, in, the, in, in our video. Uh, the actual system we're recording this with now is the system he's talking about with all the crazy cores and threads in there. Nice. But then it's a matter of just, do you have enough PCI 3.0 slots? Right. Right, at that point. Um, yeah, I mean, I imagine if you, yeah, somebody could probably make some like interposer or some kind of an adapter board that would give you like a take a by sixteen slot and turn it into four by four. You know, yeah, PCI yeah, that's true. Um, uh, yeah, with like a it's physically with a, possible with a bridge chip. Yeah, well, yeah, it wouldn't even need to be necessarily like if you if you set it up properly, it would just these four lanes or is this one oh, device? These four I lanes, gotcha. is, right? Not bridging them all into one because that would actually choke it. Yeah, right. It would be a bottleneck. But you could have like one of these on each of maybe you know each. Yeah. It's, a, it's a kind of a weird, obscure idea, but it is a possible. How thing. much are these four hundred gig drives a piece? They're like four fifty. I think so. Four twenty, yeah, four fifty. Um, yeah. So I mean, four of them is sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. That's a stupid amount of money, but it's not crazy. It's one point six terabytes of storage. Yeah, so you're getting a lot of storage. Yeah. And. You're getting this insane amount of speed. If you yep. had four of them, in theory, you could do these four bottom and then a regular, regular ass graphics card up there too. That's true. Yeah, right. You could do that. Yeah. You could do four 1.2 terabytes. That you you yeah. pay a lot more money for that. Yes. But uh, you wouldn't be able to boot off of them, which would be a drawback. Right. This isn't something we would really recommend our our readers mm -hmm. do. Yeah, I mean, when I was testing these, I was booting the system off of a SATA SSD. Right. So. Seems stupid, <laughs> right? You got all of this storage performance here that could be bootable individually. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you were, you could maybe have booted off. No, you couldn't. We couldn't boot off the the slow one. I mean, say you were, maybe, um, 
you know, say you were some kind of a researcher that had a l very large data set, mm -hmm. you know, and you had some, and as long as you had software that you could just tell it, hey, there's four storage units here, treat, you know, distribute your data, your data among them, right, and and kind of bypass the Windows RAID thing. Huh. All right. You know, if you had that capability in software, uh, then you could potentially get just insane you know, random access performance of the data sitting on those drives, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, it could be like MRI data or like, you know, medical kind of stuff where you just have a large data set. You need to be able to comb through it. You can't fit it all in RAM. Sure. But you want it to be really fast, right? This would walk all over anything that else that has to do with like a large set of data storage, right? This is pretty cool stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting technology demos for sure. Uh, Alan has a, a story accompanying this that will list the benchmarks and will show you the, the screenshots of the iometer runs and the addo runs and stuff like that and some more pictures of the of the setup and configuration there if you want to check that out. That will be in the description box below. For now, that's it from us. More videos coming soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks.